Okay, time to attack this lid. Time to cut. So it's the next night. Um, my camera battery died. <laughs> Did a little. That's pretty much what I cut out. Um, I cut out a couple of patches. I don't really. I'm not happy with them. Um, tried making some flanges with my vise and the hammer, but it, you know, I could, I could tap it in like that, weld it on. But um, borrowed the flange tool from the shop. I'm gonna try messing with that. I want to at least have the bottom of this flanged. So it fits there a little better. Um, I'm going to leave that bend on the top because that's just about what I need for this. But then I'm going to flange that where it sits there. And then I want to flange this side. I want to I have it fit a little better. I want to have it all ground out, ready to roll. Trail this over the shop, weld it up. Um, I like James Freddy's. The way uh, he's saying that a butt match is the best and all of that. I mean a butt weld because then you don't have the excess metal underneath trapping moisture and uh, rust out in that way but um, I don't weld enough to be that good so I want a little something back there the only places I'll be doing a butt weld are on the sides here and then I'm pretty sure that will grind down and we'll get it uh, I have nice access from underneath I'll flip this over and just soak all those weld areas with epoxy and then uh, get some undercoating in there and that should be fine and then on the top I'll use my uh, I'll lay some of this on in the weld areas and then I'll finish it off with that and prime it and then we'll get the, this lid painted okay this is a pretty slick little tool where's the uh, piece that I just um all right, I'm already starting to lose parts. I still have to grind this down and everything. This was a, a test panel for actually when I did the siding on my Jeep. Um, just made a nice little flange there. So that will fit in there nicely. And I can tack that in. I'll do that first. And then the, um, if I can, oh, here it is. <laughs> Now I'm going to flange this side. I have this set up to kind of go in here like this. And that can get all tacked in. I'm just going to draw another line there and make a flange for that now. I'm going to want that right about there. Yeah, there's two lines there. Better mark the one I want to use. All right. Now I gotta remember which way I want this to go. I think I'll use a piece of test metal first. Nice tool. This side makes a, a little hole for the, uh, if you want to do a plug weld like that pretty cool nice little tool this is a corn well all right so that went in like that which I want actually the other way I 
Okay, make sure you make sure you get this the right way. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just need a little adjustment room. Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. It's got a nice little flange to it now and it'll fit in there nicer. Just pretty much just going to grind these edges up, get it prepped for a weld. And um, it'll all just overlap on itself. Cool. So that's my old test panel that I made for the Jeep. The reason I like using a uh, used sheet metal off a car is because it already has the factory undercoating on the big areas where I'm not going to be grinding down. And uh, that's even got some old uh, matting inside, but that's fine. I'll grind off the areas that I need off. But yeah, it's um, a fresh piece of sheet metal you'd have to treat, you know, you'd have to do an etch and a primer and, or an epoxy primer. This is all done. All I got to worry about is the weld areas. And there's a start. Just need a welder now. <laughs> I'm gonna get these trail it over to the this thing trail it over to the shop and get this adjusted and zap these into place. Alright, took this over to the shop at lunch break and uh, my weld suck. <laughs> No, I was in a hurry. I didn't have time to let it cool down. I just had to get it done and out of there. Now I got a big warp thing to deal with. I'm out here. So I'm going to get a little hammer and dolly work to do. And a lot of grinding to do. That's pretty ugly, but we'll make it a little better than that. So, in, in uh, my haste doing these crappy welds, what I also did was I didn't keep an eye on this line so I got a bit of a gap there that doesn't belong there it's probably somewhere about like that so what I'm gonna do is just take this big old screwdriver and I have access right there and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try and get that tapped up a little bit do some more grinding I'll probably finish it off by sandblasting it all out again and then um, I may flip it over first and flood the back with epoxy or just go ahead and uh, short strand fiberglass but I gotta work on these this warp area a little bit too and it's mostly it's gonna be bringing this back up while tapping that down a little bit she'll be good just uh, doesn't pay to rush welding And while we're at it, we're going to throw some new pads on the Saturn before this starts grinding away. I've already pushed the cylinder in with some vice clamps. Pretty simple. Pretty much that just slides back on and those bolt back in. That's it. Cheaper than replacing this. Yeah, a little more of a gap there now. 32 bucks for front pads. That's the most I've ever paid for brake pads. Okay. These welds aren't even as good as I thought. <laughs> They're even worse than I thought. 
I'd re-weld that, but uh, getting this back to the shop to the welder is kind of a big deal. So uh, I'm going to make sure and get work that right down into there and get a little bit of a height on top of that and uh, fill this in. I got it all sandblasted and cleaned. And then I took um, I took one of these, some 36 grit, and just roughed up all around there. Make sure there's a really good mechanical bond for the uh, fiberglass filler. And um, I'm going to get that in there now. I think I'll get a stick in there and stir that up a little bit first. And then... Uh, We'll meter out just a touch of that and put a little bit of the hardener in. That's a little more what you want that to look like. Couldn't find any mixing sticks, so the old screwdriver is good. And it's a good idea to knead these up a little bit. These can break up a little too. And now it's time to mix. And I just remembered I still got to pick up some uh, spreaders. I got this old, old one here, which will be fine for this. This stuff goes on pretty rough. You can almost grind this stuff off. Oh, let's see. Maybe just a touch more. I'm going to put it on thin and really put it on tight first, and then I'll put a final heavier coat on. Start with this, see what happens. That should be plenty. I always try to figure this has to be broken up enough to use for the entire can. So you don't need a lot of the hardener. Too much hardener, it hardens up before you're done spreading it. Not enough, it never hardens at all, and you have to take it all back off. Too much hardener, if you mix up a lot of this stuff, it'll actually get really hot. So you gotta be careful where you put it until it's completely done curing if you have a big pile of waste. You just want to fold it in, fold it in. This type of filler is tough because you really can't see the hardener making a difference in color. They're supposed to actually give you a white hardener with this because it milks it out and you can tell it's, it's well really incorporated well. All right, that should be good. We'll just keep folding it in. Try to get all the air bubbles out. But the more you do this, you're probably putting more in. But you got to get it mixed up. Air bubbles isn't a big deal at this stage because this is just a water barrier, a little filler, and over this goes the final plastic. This will be a rough coat for sure. I take about that much and just really work it into this mess as best I can. About time to get a welder here, I think. I think I would have been better off using a cheap Harbor Freight welder than the really nice Miller MIG welder I used at the shop because I would have been able to take my time. That's key. But this will be fine. I've stuffed stuff with this in the past and it holds up pretty good. I think I've got it worked into all those little pits. And 
now we're gonna get thicker layer on. And I'm just gonna spread it on until I get it as good as I can. Oh, somebody came here to check up. <laughs> I'm gonna let this set up. And there's a little trick that makes this a lot easier to deal with. If you take a piece of uh, 40 grit or even 36, you can use this like a cheese grater when this gets to not quite hardened yet. It's very easy to just top it off and start leveling it out. And then when it finally gets harder, it blocks out nice with 80 after that. But that helps, that saves a lot doing that. And believe it or not, it doesn't clog this like you'd think it would. But you gotta let it get to the right stage. And there's our fiberglass. I put a thinner coat down first. Um, sanded it down real quick and then this is a second coat just for the shape. And this is what it looks like sanding it before it's completely hardened. Clogs up your paper, but you can just wipe that off with another piece of paper. And it makes things a little easier for starters. Just get that initial cut. Because once this stuff snaps, boy, it is hard. Where's the Mustang gonna come? When's the Mustang gonna be ready? Well, it's getting there. We get the shape we want. It's all light plastic work from here on out.